let's take a step back. You're interested in studying whether aspirin reduces risk of heart disease. So the simplest thing to do, probably, is to find a bunch of people who've had heart attacks and survived, a bunch of people who haven't, and ask them about their past consumption of aspirin. You think to yourself, are people really good at remembering whether they took aspirin five years ago or 10 years ago and with what regularity? You think to yourself, maybe the people who just had this brush with death had a heart attack simply overstate their exposure in some cases. All right, well, it might be better, instead of asking them to reflect on aspirin exposure, to ask them about the aspirin they're taking right now. Let's find people who haven't had heart attacks and ask them how much aspirin they're consuming, with what regularity, and then we will walk with them through time and count heart attacks as they happen. And we'll be able to make a couple groups, the aspirin takers, the non-aspirin takers, and we'll compare directly the rates of heart attacks in those two groups. So this is known as a cohort study, and what's beautiful about a cohort study is that your collection of data about the exposure is unrelated to their destiny. Nobody knows when you're collecting the aspirin data whether they're going to have a heart attack or not. So that's more powerful than the case control design. However, of course you're thinking to yourself, but people who take aspirin regularly might be different than people who don't. If they think there's a health connection, then the people who are taking that aspirin preventively are probably also eating better and exercising and doing preventive health care. And they're probably richer. There are probably all kinds of differences between the aspirin takers and the not aspirin takers that themselves are related to how likely that person is to have a heart attack. Observational studies are extremely difficult to do well. Um, and I think students enjoy the fact that there are so many problems, that there are so many ways to get it wrong, um, and so much care is required to get it right. In both of the designs I've just outlined, people chose for themselves whether they were going to take aspirin or not. When we move to an experimental context, what's so powerful is that the investigator chooses whether individuals are going to take aspirin or not. When you do that, when you take a group of people and randomize them into two groups, you end up with two groups that are reasonably comparable with regard to both factors you can measure, like gender distribution, but also factors that are much harder to measure, like a general propensity towards health-related behaviors. Then if you see differences in heart attack rates downstream between these two groups, you have a lot of confidence that the differences you observe are due to the intervention. Here, giving people aspirin versus not.